Taysom, welcome to the 1,079th interview you have done as a BYU quarterback. We'll do what we can to make it memorable, okay? That's great. That's great. I, I was laughing because Jerem said he could sit as high as he can in his seat. But when, want. He's, when he's standing, he can't do anything <laughs> about it. I don't know if you can see the platform shoes he's wearing, but um, maybe we can get him a little higher. Taysom's I'm unimpressed. Right I'm, un I'm unimpressed. All That's right. why I hang out with Brian Logan often. It's already memorable, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Today was the final day of fall camp. What do you what do you think you guys did or got done during fall camp? I think um, I thought our coaches did a really good job of structuring this fall camp. So um, we were able to to go hard a lot of times, right? But then they were able to back us off, and so I think because of that, we were able to get the most out of it. And uh, honestly, I feel like for the most part, we've stayed really healthy, and um, we were able to improve a lot with the guys that are going to be playing because they were able to limit reps and and manage that really. Well, this is fall camp number four from you. Was there anything unique and different about the core of guys this year compared to years previous? Yeah, I think, uh, look, when, when you're going against each other all the time, as much as we have been doing, relationships are kind of like, oh, man, I'm going to get that guy, you know. And um, there was certainly there was the comp competition was, was just as good as it has been in the past. But I think everything that would happen on the field was left there, right? And uh, I think because of that, there's been a mutual respect on both sides of the ball. And, um, you know, I, I love our defense making plays, right? And I love seeing our offensive guys make plays. And I think uh, because of that, this team has, has been able to stay unified and uh, moving forward. Like, we're, we're a unit, and uh, we're going to be really good. Physically on the field, what's the biggest impact of not having Jamal Williams there on you? Um, I haven't noticed any difference. I, I think, you know, this year we've kind of made a transition to, uh, hey, we need to limit the amount of runs that Taysom has, right? And and the way that we're doing that is, is simply calling more pass plays. And uh, we have erred on not putting specific runs in because it's it's put me up the A gap. And uh, so honestly, I haven't felt any impact that way physically. Um, you know, maybe that question would be better for like a LG Brown, right, or uh, Nate Carter, who's happened to pick up the load there a little bit. But um, I think the transition has been let's throw the ball more. And um, I think it was a natural progression. You know, we were able to kind of minimize, you know, the damage with losing Jamal because of that. You told us on media day that you, as a quarterback, would rather throw a, throw a touchdown then run it in for a touchdown. With the wide receiver core you have right now, does that make it easier to want to throw touchdowns? For sure, for sure. I mean, those guys, those guys are really good. Um, you know, Moroni came in and, and he gives us another really big target. And and Devon's one of those guys that uh, it, it's hard to get hands on, so he can get off any any bump man pressure. And um, so I, I think with the guys that we do have, it's it's made an easy transition to throw the ball more, especially down in the goal line, right? Um, where we can just throw the ball up and let those guys go go make plays. One of those guys that could make plays uh, new this year, Nick Kurtz. Is it too much to expect that he's going to be pretty stinking good this year? No, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, this is his second year in the offense. And coming in from a JC, learning the offense, um, I think that that's probably a little bit too much to expect, right, to learn it and then be able to, to play as fast as we do and make plays. But he's been in the offense. And um, maybe if we still needed some time or, like, he, he was still struggling with things, I, I wouldn't say that. But um, he's ready to go. And he's shown what he can do out on the practice field. And, and I don't think we're going to see any, uh, you know, there's, there's not going to be any uh, transition that he's going to need from the practice field to the game field. He's going to be really good. How confident are you in the stable of running backs that you have right now with Algie and Nate and Adam Hine? Yeah, uh, really confident. No, I, I think one of the things that, that hurt us a little bit with losing Jamal was simply depth. You know, we need all those guys to stay healthy. Um, but if they do, you know, those guys are all very capable of doing uh, doing whatever we need them to do. So I'm very pleased with the way that they, they ran during fall camp and, and we'll be good. What about the emotional vacancy that Jamal left? Is Do you feel like you need to be that guy now or is there somebody else stepping up and doing that? You know, I, I, I try not to be somebody that I'm not, right? And, and um, But I, that's going to hurt us a little bit. And, and Jamal was, was a pretty quiet guy on the practice field and even on the game field. But there's times, man, where, where he could feel it, that we needed a little lift. And uh, Jamal Jamal added that energy that we needed. And, and I don't know what we're going to do to make up. Maybe that's me. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's 
that's uh, Tijon up front, who is a pretty emotional dude. Uh, Louis up front. Maybe it's Algie. I don't know. But um, well, we'll just have to see uh, when we get there. Maybe a game day dance on Instagram. There you go. Maybe uh, <laughs> maybe he'll stu- still do that and send it to all of us. We'll see. That would be nice for everybody. Uh, in your mind, were you 4-0 last year or 8-5? Me personally, I, I would say we're we're a team, right? We're, we went eight and five, and um, uh, watching those those games after I was was injured, I felt the losses just as much as the other dudes did. So um, we're eight and five, and we need to be better. So um, that's where we're jumping from, and and uh, you know we need to get to double digits for sure. With that said, do you feel like you can pick up where you left off at four and zero, and things were things were working? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it, it, for me personally, right, I, I look at where we were as an offense when I was playing, and I expect to build on that, right? I can't just kind of settle for that. But I expect to, to do what we did last year at the beginning of the year when I was playing and then to build on that. Did you learn any secrets about football in your business adventure over the summer? <laughs> Um, maybe, maybe a little bit about relationships, right? Like dealing with different relationships and uh, kind of being the guy down on the, the lowest end of the totem pole, right? I was this little intern, but I was working with all the bosses, and I, I saw how they handled their relationships with other coworkers, and I and I saw how they handled me specifically, and I, I think I was able to learn from those guys just the way they interacted as being a leader. That's why my seat's so high. Okay. You really <laughs> there? All right, all right. Okay. Did, has there been a fall camp MVP in your mind? Um, or MVP? Yeah, uh, I, I think that's kind of a tough question. I, I, I think that's what we ask. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, look, Tijon, Mitch Matthews, right? Algie Brown, uh, those guys just do do what you expect them to do, right? They're very consistent, and uh, so it's hard to to single one of those guys out and say, hey, they're the MVP. But um, I would say, I, w- I would say Tijon maybe just because because of his ability to to make different calls at the line, the emotion that he brings. We're able to add different things to our offense, whether we stress protection in the pass game or we add different uh, blocking schemes in the run game. So everything starts up there, and, and I would really attribute that to him. Robert and I says he's opened up the playbook essentially entirely to you, and he trusts you. Do you dream plays sometimes? I mean, what? how, how confident are you in that you can go out there and, and drop any single play in that playbook right now. Yeah, I'm very confident. I know I know Coach and I stuff like like the back of my hand, right? And I think that's kind of been a big jump for me is is you know senior quarterbacks always talk about the game slowing down, right? And seeing the coverage and all those things. But I think because of my knowledge of the offense and who I'm reading and, and my keys, I think that's the reason why. And um, you know coach and I have a great relationship so I can go in and tell him, hey, like I like this play but I don't like it right here like let's let's get that out of there and, and he respects or, that and he respects that and uh, w- which is super valuable and um, even even I'll be home and I'll be thinking about specific plays and different formations and I'll come back and I'll tell coach Beck like hey I really like this play but I like it better out of this formation and then we'll put it in and we'll, we'll see how it works so I, I love the relationship that I have with with both coach Beck and coach and I you have survived the 1,000 and was it 79th I don't interview know. as a BYU I don't know quarterback. <laughs> Jason, thanks for the time. No problem. It's good to see you guys.